so the water coming out, what's that then? That's the water that's left in these pipes in, in, in the system. So you've got that, there's the anti siphon um, uh, piece of equipment at the back there. What that does is it breaks the siphon so that um, if when you're in the water, it doesn't siphon water back out of, into the, out of the sea uh, and back into the engine. Uh, that, that's a very important part, that. Uh, otherwise, the water can siphon back. Um, well, you've got to speak soon. Mm. <laughs> yeah, this, this, this actually, we'll, we'll clean this up in a minute, Laura. Um, this is what they call a speed seal. Yeah, it's, on, it's got it on it there. Um, he's gone, well, he's not gone out of business. He's, he's, I think he's retired, but a superb bit of kit. We've got one on him here. And what you do is you leave the two bottom screws in place there, and then you can just slide it out. But I notice, oh, there's, oh, yeah, carefully get that rubber off there. Mm. Uh, there's an O-ring on there. Just, just a bit of time, just keep it, you'll get it out without breaking it. There are little impeller, uh, little pullers that mm. the jabs go sell to do this, but they're about 80 quid. Mm. So, uh, there you go. Right. What happens is when, when it's left for a long time, which this has been, um, they, the impeller blades take a set, so you can see that. They will still work, uh, but they do take a set. And also, you'll notice in there, there's a pin. Can you see that little pin that goes yeah. up and down? You can knock that out, you can push yeah. them out. But if you look on there, there's a little slot, and the pin fits into that slot. Into that slot and it's right. that that drives, turns it around, so that it rests against that pin and turns, turns the impeller, uh, driven by the engine. Um, the other thing is, I don't think you get close up on this. When you take these out, you can see if this was in a bad shape, you'd see cracks appearing at the root of the of the lobes. And this is oh yes, you can just see. I don't know, can the camera pick that up? The little cracks across there, um. and it goes to show that they're just starting to get of an age. Let's see if I can get a better one than that. Yeah, see, I don't know, you can see those little marks there. See by my nail. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's the beginning of it starting to deteriorate, and that's what you need to look out for when you're inspecting your water pump impeller. Um, really bad. I've seen big cracks. I've seen them broken off. Uh, but that's what that's what you're looking for when you check your impeller um, yearly. Just top one. Yeah. Yeah. And then. Okay. The pump housing is round except for this bit here. So what happens is the water. Uh, comes in there's a suction side yes there, there's a suction side there the impeller blade picks up a slug of water and you can see where there's a lobe there which is smaller than the rest of the circular bit so it squashes it there it bends the blade and then the blade um, it compress it doesn't compress the water but it, it it then moves the water from there up here and that's how, it, how the pump works so that as this is turning it is actually the blade bends, straightens, bends, straightens, bends, straightens, bends, straightens, bends, straightens, bends, straightens, as it's going past this lobe. Um, this lobe actually bends and straightens, and that, that, that what is what causes the pumping action. What can happen sometimes is these lobes uh, do wear, and the pump loses efficiency. There's a screw on the side, you can change these as well. Very rare, but it does happen. Uh, so uh, a new impeller usually fixes everything, but if it's still not working properly, look to do this. Also at the back here, there is a seal, uh, which will need changing occasionally. I have changed them before now. You have to take the uh, pump off, one, two, three, four uh, nuts, take the pump off. There's some bearings there. It's quite an involved process. You can change the seals as well. Uh, but if ever you see water coming out of the back of the pump, it means that the seal, which is just on the shaft here, is starting to leak. Uh, I, th I think it, it, it is time to replace this and I have got uh, a, a new one with us. In an in emergency, this, this is it's still usable. Um, so keep it as a spare? Keep it as a spare, yeah. yeah. Uh, Speed Seal is a company which made uh, these covers. They make it easy to replace impellers, easy to get off, thumb screws, uh, that sort of thing. But the, the only problem is, of course, um, as a lot of people know, they have stopped trading 
and getting hold of these O-rings is very, very difficult. So if you have got a speed seal killer, be careful with your O-ring because you're going to find um, it difficult to get a new one of those. Uh, again, one of the beauties of a speed seal is there is a Teflon washer inside it and then uh, the bronze washer goes on top so that these uh, pumps can actually run dry. Uh, they're used by the RNLI because the RNLI start their engines up before they go in the water and it can, it, the engine can be running and it won't um, because the, this, this uh, plate turns on the Teflon instead of the impeller turning on the, on the, on the plate um, they, they can run the engine dry for uh, quite a few minutes before uh, anything bad goes wrong. Things up uh, nicely. I've just put Vaseline on here to hold the, uh, the O-ring in place. Um, and to put some lubrication just on the Teflon. There's some lubrication in that? Yeah. Oh, you got it? Yeah, 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 yeah. In the, in the, in the bag, yeah. Right, okay. Every yachty should have a Swiss Army knife. I mean, I've carried one all my life through the oil field in Africa and the Middle East, and I've always got a Swiss Army knife in my pocket. And that's what you need when you're doing your little job. You go, there we go, job done. <laughs> um, lubricant that comes with the new impeller. It'll be a silicon liquid. And we get the, uh, can you? Give it. Uh, anyway, get it on the. Uh, we make it a mess here. It. It's okay. It's okay. Tell you what you can do is go and slather it all over the housing there. Mm -hmm. Please. Gasket just um, actually shows you the shape where the water scoop gets scooped up here, so you can see that it's not completely round. It's it is shaped inside. You should, yeah, you can see the impeller turning now, and you can see the way it's turning. And they, there you go, and it's as each of the little comes past. So it picks up the water there, brings it around here, and then delivers it there, and then pumps it out. Right, okay, there are two types of engines. Nowadays, the vast majority of, of them are um, intercooled, uh, using seawater, raw seawater as the cooling medium, and then an internal fresh water uh, with antifreeze or uh, inhibitor uh, to actually cool the engine. And if we switch to over here, this is what they call the heat exchanger on this Volvo Penta. And you can see the seawater comes in through this pipe from down there, goes through a strainer, is then delivered to the pump, the pump picks it up, takes it around there and delivers it to this pipe, which then goes to the anti-siphon valve up there, it comes back to here and goes into the intercooler. Now that cool, cold seawater is actually going through the centre of the intercooler and on the outside of it there's a housing with antifreeze and fresh water and this is the fresh water pump this turns around and pumps the fresh water around the engine into one part of the intercooler the seawater goes into the other part of the intercooler and so there's a copper pipe separating the two and the heat is transferred from the hot engine fresh coolant fresh water coolant to the seawater and then the seawater on the back end of that intercooler, the, you'll see a pipe which we might need to look at later on, is actually pumped into the exhaust system. And then that seawater is also used to cool the exhaust system gases. So that we can use, and I don't know if you can get it, Alison, um, right in the back there, there's a plastic silencer, right at the very, very back, that grey thing there. Yeah. The seawater goes into there and the exhaust goes into there. And when you hear um, a boat going past, you hear this bloop, 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 whoosh, bloop, 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 whoosh. What is happening is the, the seawater is building up in the silencer. The pressure of the exhaust is collecting it and blowing it out. So that bloop, 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 whoosh is the exhaust pressure pushing the water out of the silencer. So the seawater cools the engine through the intercooler. It also cools the exhaust system so that we use plastics and rubber pipes in the exhaust system uh, instead of having to make them out of metal.
Okay. You're doing okay, actually. I do like fiddling, but it, it, I always think if anything happens when you're out at sea, then at least I've got some knowledge and I know where to go when he says get that or when he's, you know, if, if anything happened. So uh, it's good to, to share it, yeah. The idea of the speed seal is you can leave two screws in uh, in the housing and just slide this the, the cover on like that and then put the other two screws in like that and the idea was in a rolling sea the original ones had six screws teeny wee little screws you try to undo them you'll be feeling seasick the, the um, and it'd be hot and smelly and all the rest of it and if screwdriver slipping and all the rest of it and then you drop the screws on it the idea with the speed seal was of course you slacken the two bottom ones off take the two ones big ones off they're nice and easy to get off and then the plate slides off easy peasy that's it in fact i'll, I'll do it for you so there we go right there so slap the two bottom bottom ones off take the two top ones out he says And there it is. So slide it in. Like that. So, so just nip them up. And the idea is, of course, that you can do it without tools. That's it, love. And if you can get that down there, just to catch, and we will use that for cleaning the fatties. If you can just get it over to that side. Oh, sorry. Where is sorry. it? Do, do it oh, under there. that one there, please. Right. Okay. So you put your nappy under the engine, yeah. and what's that to catch? That's to catch oil, oil or fuel, whichever drip. If, if, if we're going to drop drop it all, I like to keep the bilges clean. We we always do this sort of thing, so that when when it's all done, we'll clean all this up. Hopefully, we'll have caught the diesel fuel that's going to come out of that filter there. Um, top tip: get a four, four pint milk carton, cut the bottom half off it. And okay. then you can wrap it around the bottom of the filter so that when you loosen everything off, the fuel that's in the filter is caught up in the bottom of the uh, milk carton. That's it, it's that's in it. there. That's it. We've got the screw out. And if you see that now. Right, can you. All right, if you take that, can you get that out? There's the fuel coming out. Yeah. Hold on, it's going in there. Hold that. No, I don't want it to go over there. That's what I'm saying. So it can you, do you want to catch it with this little do or do you want to catch it with your nappy? Well, the so nappy's that. good, but I think if I get that round, it'll be better because it's um, it's going over there. Yeah, you there's don't quite want a bit in smelling there. Smelling through there, do you? Yeah. Okay. I've got the top half of the filter in my hand. Laura's got the filter bowl in the, in the bottom there, and we're trying to get rid of the diesel that's in the filter and in the bowl without spilling it everywhere. It's horrible if you get in the bowl you need to spill diesel. Right, how are, you, how are you getting on, Laura? You're still running a bit. So it's coming out from under there. And there it is. So there we've got the filter, the filter bowl. This is the bit that catches the water, so that if you've got, you're supposed to be able to, I hate these things. Oh, no, we'll, we'll catch it with the, again, top tip, puppy pads. Excellent when you're playing around with horrible smelly diesel. <laughs> Right. We can see if there's any water in uh, the system, it ends up here. And as you can see, there's no water in there. So the, the system is good. Um, there is in the bottom of these filters a little plastic um, drain. So you can drain any water that does get in there. But inevitably, they stick. And I hate trying to take them apart because they break. And if they break, then you've got to dig all the plastic bits out. So I tend not to use them, but there you go. 
So the primary f fuel filters come out clean, yeah. um, which is a good sign. If it wasn't, what would that mean? Um, it would mean that that, that fuel would have been dirty. Uh, what we know from taking the top off that is relatively clean. Um, it, that confirms what what our initial diagnosis was. Yes, there's a bit in there, but it's clean because if 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 that stuff had been around floating around whilst the engine was last running, I would expect to see water dirt in there from those antennas. So that's fine. Okay, the trouble with the CAV two ninety six system is when they give you a new filter, if you've got an extension on like we have here, they don't never give you enough seals. So the one seal short. So I've I've changed the fil the, the seal in the bottom there. You can see that is the one that came with the filter. So that's a new seal there. That fits on top of it. And then where the filter goes on to there, uh, is it that one? Mm -hmm. Just goes out there. We have to reuse it. And I hate reusing seals. And then that one there goes in the top there. Um, just, I'll try and explain later on. In the CAV filters, there's two little um, O-rings, one there, which fits inside the housing there, which people don't know about. Um, we'll try and dig it out afterwards. Um, we need a little sharp pointed instrument, like my Swiss Army knife or something, to dig it out. Uh, we won't be able to get it on camera because it's right underneath there, but I'll, I'll get the old one out and we'll, we can uh, then talk about that there. I think I'm trusting uh, Dig out this little O-ring here as well. And that there, and, and the problem is we won't be able to photograph it, I don't think. There's a little spigot in there that this slips onto, yeah. like something like that. And this, this O-ring is on there so that this slips over it. And crucial thing to change this. So um, what I'm going to do is put that down there and change this here. And I don't think you'll be able to get it, but it's on the spigot underneath here. There you go. In fact, it's um, underneath, is it? It's underneath, yeah. That's how you are. Okay. Right, that, that, that spigot there is where this filter goes onto, and there's a little o ring goes on the outside of it. Very important that you change that uh, o ring there because if you don't, it can leak and it will suck air and it will be a, a, a small sort of uh, bleed afterwards. Right, I'm putting the new seal into place in the housing, which fits. There's the old one, that, oh, where we, which the top part of the filter fit, fits against. So that goes, that's in there now. Uh, there, and at the back there, top tip. Use some grease or some Vaseline to hold the seal in place whilst you're trying to do trying to fit the new filter assembling it all the, va the vaseline is to try and hold the seal in place whilst we assemble the whole filter assembly that should do it We got it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just imagine trying to do this in a rugby sea. difficult because I've got three elements that I'm all try trying to get all in line so I can meet this screw um, through all three. Through all three. <laughs> I've got it. I've got it. I've got it. Right, we have to make sure that this filter is right. If we don't, then we, there's a leak on one of these seals and that's the trouble with these three elements CAV 296s. They will leak air and uh, 
it, would, it can make the difficult starting as when you leave the engine the air can seep in. So we have to make sure we get this right. That's it, I know just This, this is the worst job of all because inev invariably when the filter gets blocked it's in the middle of a, a big heavy sea and you're trying to do this you imagine with the boat going up and down and <laughs> the bleeding screw off the top of the secondary filter and I'm going to use the pellet pump to try and suck fuel through that there to make sure it isn't leaking before we go on to the secondary. 